We're going to create a laser light effect in Blender using a really simple technique. It'll allow us to rotate our models and have the light projected however we like, and it'll all be controlled from a area light. And we can move that around and have it contort and conform to the different shape of the model. So this technique in general was inspired from three sources. One is this artwork made by EPROM, Steve Teeps, and G, or sorry, JDG94. You can see the, the grid of light being projected out, and actually going through a translucent material, which I think is really nice. Also, Tiago Marino. Uh, again, you have this light that's being projected on top of multiple surfaces and changing based on the curvature of the surface. And I think it adds a nice uh, texture and also a kind of a more futuristic texture onto an image. And the last inspiration is Zomax or Cornelius Damrich, which uses the same technique but animates it in a slightly different or more dynamic way, uh, creating this kind of like laser uh, dentist's office type feel. So to begin, I'm going to create a brand new scene. And I'm going to just create a plane underneath this cube. I'll delete the camera, I'll delete the point light, and I'm going to add an area light. We're also going to go into rendering mode, and I'm going to switch it to cycles and GPU. And I'm going to bump up the intensity of this light, maybe 100 to start. So there's a new feature. I think it was made almost six months ago, but as I was trying to make this effect, I would kind of create a plane and I would basically put it in front of the light and then I'd make like a, a grid with transparent lines and, and diffuse lines with the, you'd create the light seeping through. It was, it, it actually worked, but it ends up being problematic because uh, basically you have this extra geometry in the scene that then also receives and casts shadows. And it can create a lot of issues, especially when you want to add additional light to your scene besides just this, this laser effect. So as I was playing around, I noticed when I went into the shading tab, which I'm just put up over here, shader editor, I noticed there was a use nodes right here and I clicked this and I found out there's a whole way to do a, a shader graph on a light. So there's no material involved, but it's just on the light. And it allowed me to do this effect in a much simpler and, and more dynamic way. Uh, by default, an area light or any light has an emission with a strength of one. I could tweak the intensity of the light here, but in general, I think keeping it at one is best because I can also tweak it over here. And when I tweak it over here, even if I don't have a shader editor up, whenever the area light is clicked, I have this property very accessible uh, to tweak. So I prefer to keep that as is. So I'm basically gonna do the same technique. I basically wanna create a grid and switch between a transparent shader and this default emission. So I'm gonna do, oh sorry, emissions already created. I'm gonna do a mix shader. So we're gonna mix between these two. And how are we gonna mix it? How are we gonna create the grid? I want to create a grid uh, basically by using the brick shader. To me, this is the simplest way to do it. Um, and specifically with the area light, I'm gonna want, want to have a geometry and use this parametric output. And I'll put it into a mapping and, and put that into the vector. Um, so this basically is kind of like our UV map, but because lights don't have UV maps, I'm using parametric. And I'll show you at the end how to do it with an area light as well, which will be slightly different, but very similar. So I'm going to plug this into the mix shader. And at first we don't see anything, okay? So the reason for this is because of the spread. It's at 180, and this basically blurs whatever we're we're putting into this texture. So if I bring this to one, you can kind of see, I think it's a little, maybe it's a little blown out. Let me change these colors real quick just so we can see it better. Okay, there we go. So we have the mortar as black right now and 
the color of the brick is white. I'm going to change the offset to zero. I think the mortar is too, uh, too big right now. So we'll just keep tweaking this. I think actually if we make all these bricks bigger, it'll be a lot easier to see. So I'm going to put a value node into the width and height because we want to have a grid and we're starting to see it. Okay. And just to explain the spread, because I mentioned it before, if I were to increase the spread, you'll see it, it starts to get blurry, which could be really nice to kind of like animate in and out based on what you're trying to do. But for this tutorial, I'll stick it or I'll keep it at one. And using brick texture in particular, I have um, kind of like these lines on the two edges. So I can just uh, click and drag and scrub this to an area that I think is a little bit better. Um, so we're already getting kind of this effect that we want. And I can change emission to get a color that I think is a little more interesting. And it's already working. So if I were to like move it to the side, you can see we get some nice bounces. And we haven't even done anything with material and in lighting at all. And I actually think if we bump it up to something, let's say like 2000, uh, it might become a little more interesting. We could add some things like, like glares. Um, and also I think in general, the cube is kind of a, a boring mesh to project onto because it's just so flat. So I'm going to create a Suzanne model. I'll sub D it twice and apply it. So something like that. And let's just rotate this and project onto Suzanne. So this is the general gist of it. I think, you know, there's always ways to make it more interesting. And I'll, I'll, I'll do some right now just so we can get it into a better place. So I basically delete the plane. I'll go into this world here. I'll set the background to black. Uh, I'll actually go into the world shader and I think it'll look better if you can actually see the model. So you could do that with a bunch of lights, but I think environment textures are kind of the, the simplest way to do something like this. So I'm going to go into my resources folder. So this is my personal HDRs that I have. I'll do something like this one, which is an office space. And maybe I'll lower this to something like 0.2. And I don't want to see the office, so I'm going to do a light path node and a mix shader node. And I'll do is camera ray. And we'll just duplicate this so we can see it on a black background. All right, so now if I go back into the light, I need to switch this back to object. Let me click on the light again. So there's a few things. I think these lines are a little too thick. Uh, so it's a little hard to tweak just with the scroll bar. So I'm going to kind of like do 0 0.001, maybe two. And it's kind of like a mixture of tweaking a bunch of different parameters till we get something that we think looks good. I think this will start to become pretty interesting. Um, and we want to actually affect this, this Suzanne head. I'm going to create a material for this as well. And I want to show you one thing that I think is really nice. So if I were to delete the principal BSDF and just add a volume, uh, principal volume, and I plug this into the volume node and I up the density, you can see that we can actually get light inside of the object as well. That's kind of passing through it. Maybe I'll make the inside white. So now that we have a volume that actually receives light, I can do the exterior of it as well. So I'll bring back a principal BSDF and I can do something that has a transmission so we can get to see some of that also just Lower the alpha a little bit. We can kind of tweak the colors. Sometimes adding a little metallic could be cool. 
we're starting to get to a place that I, I think becomes pretty interesting. And also, I think in general, uh, if we were to go into compositing and we add a glare node, and I'll just keep all the default settings except switching it to fog glow and high. And I'll put a viewer node as well. And I'll also create a camera just so we can see what's happening. Let's go into view, camera, camera to view, I think that says, yeah. Go into the camera and we can kind of just move it around. And I'll just lower our samples to 1024 on the render. Click render. And of course we could tweak this material. We add some scratches and some dust, uh, potentially some Fresnel glow, and even potentially some kick lights and it'll look better and better. But you can see this effect is already working quite well. Um, to me, I think it, it's uh, quite an exciting technique. And I also really like it because I could do something like a, a cube here. And I could create a material that again just has like a principled volume. And it's a little too uh, foggy right now, but you can see this light projects all the way through any volume. So it really lets us do some amazing effects. Um, and of course, maybe I'll just add some more geometry just so we can kind of see what's happening a little better. Let's just throw that there too. All right. So the last thing I want to show you is how to do it with a area light as well, just in case, or sorry, a, uh, a spotlight, because in case you want to have like a, a circular fall off, which you could do in the shader node here, you know, you could add a, a gradient texture, you could do a mapping and you could do, put this in here and then you could do a mix shader. It's actually not that hard to do it in here, but if you want to have um, a spotlight that kind of has it by default, I'm going to show you how to do that as well. I'll just basically just copy all this so we can use this in the area, or sorry, the spotlight. I'll create a light spot. Let me hide the previous area light. So now we just have this spotlight and I'm going to do use nodes on it and I'll paste our previous node graph and plug it in. The only difference is with a spotlight, this parametric uh, geometry won't work for its mapping. Instead, we'll want to have the coordinate, texture coordinate, and we'll want to use the normal, except this also won't really work perfect. It'll create some stretching that you might end up seeing. So. To fix that, you're going to do a separate X, Y, Z, and then a vector math. And we're actually going to use this normal and we're going to divide it by the Z and plug that into the vector. So I'll clean this up just so you can see it better. So this is the only difference here and it should work. Uh, I think the brightness is just really too low. So if I bump that up, I think we can start to see it. I'm going to move it kind of where it was before. And I actually think we have a similar problem to the area light before. You see it's kind of blurry, so we can't see it. So by default, whenever you create the light, it, it has, um, uh, I guess for spotlight, it's called radius. And for area light, it was called spread. So for the spot, if we lower the radius to uh, zero, we can get like this really nice crisp line. And you also see on the sphere here that there's kind of like a nice gradient fall off as well. I think it's a really cool technique. If you liked it, please drop a like and a sub and a comment. And I'll post this file on my Patreon. If anyone wants to just download it, you're welcome to. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.